somebody, oh, love somebody, the way I love you. Ooh. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. We are in the mood for singing this morning. <laughs> You're still sleepy? Well, that, that, uh, that song uh, uh, has been ringing in my head. Since I woke up, because today's uh, gospel has to do with that, has to do with loving somebody. Okay, so let's hear all about it. It's Friday, August 23, 2019. Okay, so the gospel is from St. Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 to 40. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by saying, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. What's that, John? So the greatest of all the commandments is the commandment of love. Both love for God first and love of neighbor. You see, it's the greatest commandment and it's also the most difficult, not only to execute, not only to render, but it is also the most difficult to understand. It is one of the most misunderstood um, tenets of faith and, 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 uh, and commandment for that matter. I mean, could you imagine, uh, could you imagine loving others let's just focus on loving others as part of this commentary loving others as you love yourself see what does that exactly mean what does it mean to love others as you love yourself this has nothing to do by the way with that other song since we have started by this commentary by singing that the, the other song that goes the greatest love of all is to love yourself, right? You know that song? Eh? Da, 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 love of all is easier than the greatest love is to love yourself. But that is very wrong. That is very wrong. The greatest love you can ever muster is to love yourself. That's very wrong. That's very contrary to what the gospel tells us here. The gospel tells us, we have, Jesus tells us, we have to love others at least, at least, the very least requirement is at the same degree that we love ourselves. So you see, the focus of our love, the focus of charity is not ourselves. It is actually the others. Okay? So it's very wrong to prioritize having to love ourselves, And the reason for that is because, you see, it's already the natural course of things. We naturally love ourselves. We don't have to exert any more effort to love ourselves. Okay? In fact, we love ourselves too much. Too much to the point that because we love ourselves too much, we forget about the others. We tend to focus on what we like, on what we desire, on what our whims, on our preferences, on our comfort, on our looks, right? Woohoo! How vain can we get, right? We tend to focus too much on ourselves. That is why the parameters, the yardstick that our Lord gave us is love the others at least in the same measure that you love yourself. That is what this gospel means. He did not say, yeah, love yourself first. <laughs> no, that's not what it means. 
Well, but that's how many people misinterpret what our Lord says here. Okay? The yardstick he uses is, yeah, okay. And that's the minimum, by the way. That's the minimum. The least you can show to others is the same kind of love you show for yourself. Okay? But that is the minimum. Really, we got to go out of ourselves and, and, uh, and overexert ourselves in loving others. Because if we focus on others, then we forget ourselves. Okay? It actually works uh, uh, both ways. The way to love others, really, is to forget about ourselves. To sacrifice our own preferences and our own comforts and our own likes and our own vanity in order to focus our energies on serving others. Serving others. Okay? And the more we serve others, the more we forget about ourselves. The more we will love others. Okay? It has that kind of a reciprocal uh, tendency to it. Now, but what is it? What, what does it really mean to love? Okay, that's the other, the other thing that people don't understand. What does it really mean to love the others? You know, people tend to associate loving others with some cheesy, mushy, mushy, affectionate, marshmallowy, sissy-like <laughs> way of dealing with others. Eh? They think that loving others is a matter of being sweetie-sweetie uh, all the time, nicey-nicey all the time, and 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 softy-softy all the time. Well, no, that is not love. That is not love. Love, for all intents and purposes, means only one thing. It means desiring and rendering what is good for another. Desiring and rendering, meaning wanting and doing what is really, really good for another person. That's, that's the measure of love. That's what love means. It is anchored on wanting and doing what is good. Okay, let's let's understand that definition very clearly. It is in wanting and doing what is good for another. Now, the wanting, desiring what is good, there is where it, it requires a real sincere. Uh, and, and determined effort and disposition on our part because if we are not interested in the good of another in rendering to that other person what is good then there's no point uh, talking about love okay. now the doing part the doing of that good well, that is a question of manner. That's a question of process. That is a question of personality preferences. Okay? And there, in that aspect, we all differ. We all differ in the way that we show and render that love. Being cheesy and mushy-mushy and uh, marshmallowy soft with people it's not it's not always the best way and it's not always the way that works in showing them that love by the way affection is not necessarily love okay affection is just a manner of showing some love okay? uh, affection comes from the word affect affectation it means there's some emotional emphatic uh, 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 element to it but that is not always the best way to show love sometimes the best way to show our love for others is to be tough is to be firm 
It is in fact sometimes to be very brutally um, uh, uh, abrasive. Okay? Because sometimes some people can be so incorrigible in their mistakes, in the, the evil things that they do, that some force is required to shake them out of their incorrigibility, of their slumber into sin. Okay? And that is sometimes the best way that we show them that love. Some people tend to think uh, of Jesus as being so mild-mannered. But that is only one side of Jesus. You know, Jesus was telling us to love each other. Okay? Let me show you. You think he did not love the Pharisees and the, the Sadducees that we're talking about here, uh, and, and all of those uh, and all of those uh, self-righteous Jews when he told them, "You brood of vipers!" How many times did our Lord address them such? "You brood of vipers!" <laughs> or when he told Peter, "Get behind me, Satan!" Get behind me. Get out of here. You are not thinking the way God thinks. You are thinking the way man thinks. How's that for being nice? Huh? How's that for being nice? <laughs> See, it, it, being nicey-nicey, softy-softy, cheesy-cheesy is not the only way to show your love. <coughs> Is not the only way. And sometimes your parents, your parents can be tough, can be very tough on you. Right? And you parents who've never been tough on your kids, you are doing them a disfavor. Okay? Loving your children is not a question of being soft to them, of catering to their every whim of giving them everything they ask for. No. Wrong parenting. That is not the way to love. Not the way to love your children. So when your parents get tough on you, when your parents deprive you of things, when your parents sometimes deal with you in a very, in what you may imagine to be very harsh, just think. Maybe I deserve this. My parents have the best intention at heart for me. Have my best uh, uh, um, um, interest in mind. It is not a question of being harsh or being tough or being abrasive. It is a question of love. Love. Real love. Real charity means really, really wanting the good of the other. Wanting the good of your neighbor. <clears throat> and our Lord tells us that, well, this is the greatest commandment. Loving God and loving our neighbor. Loving God first. Because we cannot really have genuine love for neighbor if in the first place we don't have love for God in our hearts. Okay? So they come together, they go together, and we have to understand what they really mean so that we can really uh, um, put into practice this commandment of charity. So today, as we go off going about our business, let us keep in mind, am I loving my neighbors, my brothers, my sisters more than I love myself? Am I doing the service to them, caring for them, eh? attending to their needs more than I would for myself? Oh, okay. That's it for us this morning, folks. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good weekend ahead of you. Bye.